Patrick's with us in Springfield, Missouri. Hey, Patrick, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Uh, I am retired, and I have 10% of my uh, retirement in gold and silver, bullion, and coin. Uh, and my question is, with the disruptions in the economy due to inflation, the Fed move, the Ukraine war, and possible um, conflict with China in the future, should I be invested in gold and silver? And if not, is there an alternative? Um. Well, I'm 61, and um, I have uh, a net worth of several hundred million dollars, and I have zero invested in gold and silver. Tells me a lot. Okay. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, it's consistent. In other words, my advice is consistent with what I do. In the last 10 years, uh, gold has averaged 3.6%, while the stock market has averaged almost 12. And so I... Um, and, and the problem is that gold and silver are not necessarily what people will run to unless they're just afraid or greedy, one of the two. Uh, in, in other words, a failed economy that would rely on gold and silver will, before it uh, relies on that, will turn into a barter economy. So, you know, uh, the only way that, I mean, gold and silver does not have intrinsic value. It has absolutely no value except what someone else will pay you for it. Uh, gold, our green president's faces on paper don't have any value except what someone else will trade you for it. And so that's how exchange or currency works. It's when we, as a society or as a group of people, agree that something has value. We agree that little shiny clear rocks have more value than the rocks in our driveway, and we call them diamonds. But there, it actually has no different. They're both a little rock. You know, we just decided right. as a sir, as a society or a culture that there. But there's nothing that automatically means that diamonds have value. Uh, they don't. Uh, it's only because someone else wants them that they have value. And green paper doesn't have value. It's only it doesn't. It's only that someone else wants it that makes it have value. So all of that to say, anytime you're investing in a commodity because you're worried about world affairs or stupidity on a global scale or whatever it is, uh, you're really not accomplishing what you hope to accomplish there. If you, you know, and so you, you kind of got to go extreme before these things happen. And if you believe that America as we know it is getting ready to implode, which is not what you said, but for those of you out there that believe that, then gold is really not where you would put your money. You should put your money in water bottle, bottles of water, bullets, blue jeans, and gasoline. Practical things. Think, because these utilitarian things are the first things that happen in a completely devastated society. You know, you start fresh. And, and so, and, and you know, you could trade a gallon of gas where there is no gas for almost anything. It becomes like gold. So what happens, you end up trying to <laughs> trade your gold bar for a gallon of gas. It won't work. Nobody so. wants it. A gold bar, you just got to carry a stupid what thing What am I doing with a gold bar? There was a YouTube video of this kid. He tried to live on gold bars for 24 hours as an experiment. He couldn't do it. Nobody, no, nobody no, would take them. No one would take it, and then he went and resell, he tried to resell it, couldn't get what he paid for it. Oh, wow. So that That's was a fun video, fun That's experiment. Yeah. But all of that to say, um, you know, I, I'll throw in one other thing, Patrick. I'm being a little bit facetious, but I'm really not. You probably need to turn off the news. I think you've been spending too much time watching the news uh, because everything you just outlined for me is a talking point on a 24-hour news cycle, and it's affecting your brain more than it's affecting reality. Um, I mean, reality is gas has gone up, and that's really Biden's fault. Reality is because he's, you know, went all green and shut off the faucet. Anytime you create a shortage on something, you create a price increase. So if you want to be, if you want to blame somebody for five or six dollar gas, you can look at your president. He did that. If you want to blame someone for an increase in car prices, he did not do that. It's not his fault. He had nothing to do with it. If you want to, other parts of inflation, you want to see, you want to blame someone for house prices going up. It's not Joe Biden's fault. He didn't do it. Can't blame him for that. Because uh, he, it, there's no policy enacted by the White House or at his behest through Congress that caused 
those things. Those things are the result of the, a pandemic that created a shortage that drove prices up. And so we have steel prices are way up. I'm building a building up here, a commercial building. We're putting steel in it. Prices are through the roof. We have a, a, a you know, we have a shortage of no anything. Yeah, yeah, but, um, sh- but it, a shortage of anything drives the prices up. A- an oversupply of anything drives the price down. It's seventh grade economics class. It's called a supply-demand curve. And that is not Joe Biden's fault. And so when the news is on and they're going, well, the Biden administration and the, the average consumer polls are saying that everyone's mad at the president about inflation. Well, then they're just uninformed. You shouldn't be mad at the president about inflation. You'd be mad at the pandemic. But there's no greedy, you know, boogeyman out there trying to create inflation. It's going to smooth out over time. The only element of inflation that is his fault, and I'm 100% sure of this, is, is the energy issue. And he shut off all domestic production and so created a dadgum shortage of oil and therefore of gas. And now you're having to pay through the nose to get oil and gas. And we were buying 50,000 freaking barrels from Russia. And guess what? That's kind of hard to do right now. So, um, again, uh, all in the name of being green. And so George could plug his car in. That's right. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, we want George to be able to plug his car in. It's important (laughs) that your toy car can be plugged in. There are shots have been fired, guys, just so you all know. But listen, Dave, aside from that, here's what's interesting. You can build incredible wealth and never turn on the news. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Higher probability of that. I think we should do a study on that. (laughs) <laughs> statistically you will become a millionaire faster if you never turn on the news well Boom. i do know this i do know that um my stress level goes down yes my tendency to rage at something that has nothing to do with anything goes down well they're getting better at writing these headlines it makes you click it makes you angry that's yeah. how this works yeah and it's all of us are that way so just j- jumping in on there you, on, on you patrick but um you know, I my money is in good growth stock mutual funds and in real estate that I pay cash for. That's all I own. I don't own anything else. So sell sell and, all that off and put it in mutual funds. You'll be better I'm, off in the long run. Man, I'm unusually heavy in real estate, but it's because I'm a real estate guy. I got my real estate license in 1978. I've been doing real estate a long time. So I'm really comfortable with dirt, really comfortable with bricks and mortar, really comfortable being a landlord. Doesn't bother me a bit. Other people shouldn't do that because you're not comfortable with it. But, you know, real estate, I'm there. Mutual funds, I'm there.